Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, end of the week here of our first week of shows on the Troy Smith Show. It's been a very eventful week, and we're going to get to the situation in Texas. We're also going to be covering President Joe Biden today, and we're going to start with that topic. President Joe Biden continues to display a serious cognitive decline, and he's been doing that ever since he first announced his campaign for president all the way back in 2020. The most amazing part of Biden's cognitive decline is the fact that nobody in the mainstream media or uh, in the White House, for that matter, want to address his, uh, I mean, very apparent issues. Biden struggles to do something as simple as walk off of a stage or walk onto a stage or walk from point A to point B, constantly needing directions. And when he speaks, like earlier this summer, he told us that Putin was losing the war in Iraq, confusing Iraq with Ukraine. This person, Joe Biden, routinely shows that he is incapable of conducting any serious discussion, much less conducting the duties of the highest office in the land, the office of President of the United States. If you look at Joe Biden on a daily basis and you watch clips of him, you would be alarmed as to how readily apparent his issues are and glaringly obvious they are. And it would only make you even angrier that those in the White House, those in the Secret Service, those who surround the president politically are simply ignoring it. That's what I think is the most unbelievable aspect of the entire Biden administration is that there is an entire group of individuals who are pretending that Joe Biden is fine. Meanwhile, the people look at clips of Biden and see exactly what is going on. He's not fine. He obviously has a major cognitive decline. He's undergoing a major cognitive decline. And if we see a response from the Democrats at all on this, it's simply to accuse Donald Trump of having cognitive disorders himself. While Trump might not be the same uh, person he was when he was 20 years old, he certainly, certainly far and beyond and above where Joe Biden currently sits. The United States does not garner any respect whatsoever when Biden goes out into the world. In fact, um, people, while they might shake his hand and give him a smile to his face, um, they actually move away from the United States as a, as a country that is a leader of the free world um, when they encounter Biden because it's evident that this country, these people are pretending as if this guy is capable of being president when he's not. It's a glaring issue. I, I see Republicans all the time talking about corruption investigations and investigations into Hunter Biden. And of course, we had the big show where Hunter Biden showed up on, at Congress the other day. Uh, and, and everybody wants to make it about uh, something else other than Biden's obvious decline. Now, as the editor-in-chief, I decided to cover this, and I covered this in depth for many months on MSN.com, which, if you look at the numbers, is the largest news site in the world. The result of this coverage is that Rare became one of the most prominently featured uh, outlets on MSN.com. Uh, our, our views uh, over just a uh, five or six months period were over 100 million total. So we reached millions and millions and millions of people showing them exactly what Joe Biden had become. And because of this, CNN ran a hit piece on our network, Rare, and told the world that we were producing AI articles, which no AI article has ever been produced on, on, on Rare.us. We, we diligently check after that. AI is not creating our Biden articles, and I know that because I wrote them. Yet CNN and Jim Acosta sat there and told you that we were AI and that we needed to be stopped. Well, the result of this was the White House making a call to Microsoft, and Microsoft swiftly banned Rare and, of course, has done everything in their power to try to take us away from the public discourse ever since CNN decided to drag us into this fight. It's important because if I can be canceled for saying that this person, that we're going to show you in a second here, has problems, what can you be canceled for? If I could be canceled for showing a video of the President of the United States, then where do we sit as a country? In this first clip that I'm going to show you here, it's, it's Biden kind of struggling to speak and, and basically getting to the point where the words aren't even being separated in his speech. He is literally just slurring out 
blah, 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 and people are applauding, clapping, laughing, showing. And I, I said this to my brother who brought me this clip. Uh, first of all, why do these, first of all, why do these people think that we're going to watch this clip and not say, what the hell is wrong with these folks? Why are they clapping and laughing at a guy that can't even make sense? Second of all, could, what, what else could he say? What else could this, could he say anything? I mean, seriously, when you watch this clip, you're going to be amazed. So let's roll that right now. Biden uh, mixing up his words in Wisconsin. The beer brewed here, <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer in this final. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why he's talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much political discussion that goes on in this country, whether it be abortion or gun rights or the Constitution or the border, which we're going to get into in a second here. But the truth is, none of it matters if our president is like that. None of it matters if our president cannot form a coherent sentence. None of it matters if the representative of our country is so far gone that he can't even form a sentence. How far will the United States fall? Well, it's going to be a lot further if we continue to pretend and allow politicians and people in the White House to pretend as if Joe Biden is fine. We shouldn't have an investigation. Uh, if you wanted to take down President Biden, you shouldn't have an investigation into Hunter Biden and, and corrupt business deals. You should be subpoenaing the White House information and communications to figure out, are they talking about Biden's decline in back channels? Are they talking about presenting him to the public even though he's not mentally stable at this point? We need to know exactly what these people are saying, how they're working around it, and we need to know the inner workings of the Biden White House as we knew with President Donald Trump. Whether it was the Obama White House, we knew a lot about what was going on in there. We knew a lot about what was going on in the Trump White House. And suddenly with Joe Biden, who obviously struggles to speak, we don't have any information. I think that's on purpose. And I think that we need to see people, Secret Service members, uh, members of the White House staff, need to start stepping up and speaking out. Because the ultimate result of a feeble and, and dementia-ridden Joe Biden being president of the United States is that we are susceptible to attack. And while we may think it's a joke, and while it is funny, there are other countries looking at that and saying there's no dog guarding that hen house right now and we could go in there we could get everything we want and that's what you're seeing on the southern border that's what you're seeing with china's aggression across the world joe biden's feeble dementia ridden mind is is responsible for all of the aggression we see on the world stage and we're going to show a clip now that i just i think is important and it relates to this conversation this is President Trump. Now, you're not supposedly, you're not supposed to lay hands, you're not supposed to touch the shoulder or, or shake hands with the Saudi crown prince. And President Trump made it a point to do this anyway during a, a world uh, leaders meeting. So during his presidency, we're going to show that, just kind of overlay that as we're talking here. Um, you best believe that this wasn't on accident. Same thing as when Trump uh, kind of pushed himself to the front of G20 when we saw that. Um, I, I, I'm telling you folks that the world leaders, while they, the, they attacked Trump and they went to the media and said he was Hitler 2.0 and he was such a fascist, um, they said that because he was the first president in over 100 years to assert the United States as the leading world superpower. Donald Trump asserted the United States as number one, and he let those people know who was in charge. And that's exactly why they worked against him and to get rid of him, because he told them the United States is in charge. They didn't like that because they've been able to kind of run roughshod over everybody and use the American taxpayer as their personal piggy bank for the last several presidencies, whether that be George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama. They all abused the American taxpayer, uh, and, or, or I should say they allowed foreign governments and foreign entities to come in and rape the American taxpayer and take their money offshores where it doesn't benefit a single American. That is why they worked so hard to remove him and why there is such a plan in place to stop him uh, as he currently runs for president. Um, one of the most important things I think 
for people to realize as we go into 2024 is Donald Trump is not a typical Republican and Joe Biden is not a typical Democrat. Joe Biden is dementia ridden. Joe Biden struggles to speak. Joe Biden struggles to walk. He struggles to talk. He struggles in every aspect of his life. And, and yet we look at Donald Trump. There's never been an individual who's been attacked to this level, that's been raked over the coals to this level, and yet he's still pretty... He's still pretty sound. I mean, you listen to Trump talk. He's on top of it. He knows exactly uh, what he's saying, and he doesn't really trail off. With Biden, he trails off, and he, he kind of, well, you'll even hear him give up. He gives up a lot during his, well, he'll be talking, and he'll just say, well, you know, whatever, and, he, and he'll start his next sentence. This is, this is how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. You can either continue with, the president, and we'll put up the video right now of him stumbling down the stairs, or I'm, I'm sorry, up the stairs of Air Force One. Well, you can either reelect this, or we can go back to America being first and America being the leader on the world stage. And if we're going to uh, to 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 make peace of the chaos that has arisen during the Biden administration, it's going to take a strong leader like Donald Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, for our last segment here, uh, we are going to run just a clip of uh, myself on the Stone Zone. Now, if you don't know, uh, I am the co-host of Roger Stone's Stone Zone podcast, which is also here on Rumble. Um, and I'm on that show every single day. It airs at 8 p.m. Uh, so if you ever wanted to check out uh, myself and Roger talking about current events, interviewing interesting guests... Um, you can check us out there, but we're going to run a segment here from that show where I was talking to Roger about the situation in Texas to close things out. Um, I, I thank you guys so much for tuning into this show. I want you to know that we've had over 50,000 ad eligible views on this show already in just our first two episodes. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for making that happen, but I have to encourage you because we don't see the likes and the comments from you guys because most of you guys are watching on Rare.us. So what I need you to do is go into the bottom right hand corner of this video. I want you to click the Rumble icon and that will take you to Rumble. If you don't have an account, go ahead and make one. It's absolutely free and leave us a comment. Tell us what you love about this show. Tell us exactly what you want to see going forward and we'll close things out with an ad for our favorite product, folks. Again, I'm Troy Smith your host here of The Troy Smith Show, and we're gonna close out with the situation in Texas from my appearance on the Roger Stone Stone Zone from today. Uh, tell us uh, what's going on at our southern border in Texas, Troy. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, there are some thorny uh, authority issues here, uh, but uh, it really seems to me to be a mess. Oh, Roger, it is a, is a mess, and it's been a mess since Biden kind of took office here. And I think it's important for people to understand what happened in the Supreme Court. We had a ruling just a few days ago where the Supreme Court stated that um, that Texas could not uh, kind of defend their own border. And this goes along with uh, several Supreme Court rulings where the Supreme Court has kind of veered off from the Constitution. And, and now they're saying that only the federal government has the authority uh, on the border. Uh, I, I've kind of dug into this and say, OK, well, Let's look at the letter. So we had we had the letter from uh, uh, Abbott, which kind of states exactly why he's standing up, why he's continuing to say, I'm not going to let these people kind of invade our border. And uh, in that letter, I, we have the constitutional uh, arguments that were made. And I and we have uh, just just screenshots. Then if we could put up Article one, Section 10, uh, Clause three, uh, that was the main argument that was used. Uh, by uh, Governor Abbott in his letter where he's kind of talking about defending uh, the Constitution. And, and we have that. I, I, I can read that here. I, I believe we can put that on the screen as well. Um, that reads, no state shall without the consent of Congress lay any duty of tonnage, keep troops or ships in war uh, in time of peace, enter into any agreement or compact with another state or with a foreign power or engage in war unless actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit delay. Now, this is the U.S. Constitution, Roger. This is Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, which un unequivocally states 
that if a state is being invaded or is in such imminent danger, it can do what it needs to do to defend itself without the authority of the federal government. That's open and shut. The other constitutional argument that's made in that letter is using Article 4, Section 4, which we also pulled and can put up for you here, which reads, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. And on application of the legislator or of the executive when the legislator cannot be convened against domestic violence. So there you have it where the federal government is by by the Constitution, it is forced to defend the states and it, it, it's, it clearly states invasion there. So there are there's no question that Texas has the absolute right to defend its border. There's absolutely no question that the Biden administration has no authority to come in and tell Texas that they cannot protect itself against an invasion. And yet we had a ruling from the Supreme Court that stated just that. And the worst thing about this a ruling from the Supreme Court, Roger, is that we don't have the full dissenting opinions, you know, the normal. It, it, this was just allowed. The Biden administration brought this to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court simply said that they have ultimate authority on the southern border. And that is wrong. And, and now the consequence of that, we have House Speaker Mike Johnson, uh, former President Trump, and uh, 25 other governors, Roger, joining with Governor Abbott and saying, we are not going to stand for the Biden administration telling Texas that they can't defend their own southern border. They can't defend the United States southern border. When do the Biden administration refuses to do so? All right. An excellent uh, summary. Uh, this, uh, I think, uh, immigration Looking at the uh, entrance polling for the Iowa caucuses, uh, looking at the exit polling in the New Hampshire primary, uh, since there's a very, very large num of, number of independents voting in that primary, by the way, potentially even in violation of state law, I learned yesterday that there are circumstances under which non-Republicans are allowed to vote in the New Hampshire primary uh, under state law, but it must be specifically approved by a vote of the New Hampshire Republican State Committee, something that actually never took place. Uh, the Republican State Party objected, uh, but the Secretary of State, uh, a Republican, uh, uh, insisted on allowing the independents, non-Republicans, to vote in the primary anyway. Uh, had there not been a victory there by Donald Trump, I think this whole matter might have been litigated. Fortunately, Trump was so strong that despite a $34 million plus expenditure by Nikki Haley uh, and a essentially uh, a, uh, uh, an effort by the UNA party uh, to drive Democrats and independents into the Republican primary, uh, they fell short nonetheless. This was the beta test uh, I think, of the effort to use Nikki Haley uh, as a cudgel against Donald Trump. Although he will be beating her as long as she wants to stay in this race, uh, the, the media continues to downplay his victories, even though they are historic uh, in scope, uh, and try to prop up her viability even when she is no longer viable. We're going to be keeping a close eye uh, on that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's everybody's favorite part of the show, um, and it's been called a lot of things, revolutionary, uh, groundbreaking, things of that nature. When we, ch when we tried to sell ED meds using the former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, well, we have a new ploy today, um, and we're going to try to get – so this is going to be a test, okay? So this is a test for all of you guys out there. It's going to be a test. We're going to put up some of the hottest women in American politics up on the screen side by side. And if you are not even slightly aroused by this, just like I'm talking like a minuscule amount, then you need this product because the juice has got to be flown when we're talking about the hottest women in American politics. Let's go number three, Gretchen Whitmer, Michigan governor. Now, she may have shut down Home Depot and she may have tried to stop you from buying home improvement supplies, but that's just because she needed some sweet loving. Yes, that's Gretchen Whitmer. She's everybody's favorite. Um, very beautiful woman. I, I mean, the black hair on her is really something else. And if you remember, there was actually a whole article about her curves and how she was like, I've been teased about my curves since I was a kid. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you're getting teased. <laughs> anyway, folks, number three, Gretchen Whitmer. Number two, 
Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, a lot of people will disagree with this, but Kamala Harris is actually a very beautiful woman. And I think she really messed up when she married uh, Doug Emhoff, uh, <laughs> the, the second gentleman. You know, I almost... I'm almost sad that Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election because it prevented Bill Clinton from becoming the first gentleman. The first gentleman, ladies and gentlemen. Cigars and vaginas and everything. That's, a, that's gentlemen. Anyway, uh, Kamala Harris, folks, number two, very hot. And, of course, America's sweetheart at number one, the hottest redhead that anybody's ever seen. That's Jen Psaki for you. She is a bombshell, not a thing about this woman that isn't attractive, and uh, as always, she gets the number one spot here in our book. My red tie today is for you, Jen. Uh, you know, just a little gesture, if you will. So, um, in honor of those three hotties, uh, Whitmer, Kamala Harris, and Jen Psaki especially, we're going to offer you guys 50% off on your first order with my Dr. Hank. So if we went through those pictures and you didn't feel a damn thing, go get this my Dr. Hank folks because we're talking about some of the class A beauties in the history of the world and if you don't like them then you're either gay or there's something wrong with you. So hop on board, grab my Dr. Hank and make sure uh, that you're not thinking that Gavin Newsom is the most attractive person in politics. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Troy Smith Show. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you will watch our previous episodes. I hope you'll go to rare.us. And I hope you'll pick up some My Dr. Hank to help us out here with the bills, keeping the lights on and keeping us out of the salt mine. Thank you very much and have a beautiful weekend.